I'm John Skinner, and this supports my online summer flounder fishing course at saltstrong.com skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, including a link to a video that shows you how to tie the rig. So this isn't what I expected to be doing this particular morning. Uh, I had plans to go out on a friend's boat, and uh, as things worked out, I got to the marina, and I got a call from him that there had been a work emergency, and uh, he was going to be held up. So I still had gear in my truck from uh, a previous... Uh, uh, like a flats wading trip, so I had some spinning gear and some other stuff. So uh, I had time to kill, so I went to the end of the dock. Um, especially, I went over by the cleaning fish cleaning station. I'll say more about that in a bit. And hey, I know there's some pretty deep water there, and started to do some casting with my fluke rig. And figured, hey, it's it's better than sitting in the car. And it turned out to be much better than sitting in the car. So the tide was low slack, uh, not typically a great tide, but there was like a little whisper of an incoming current, which would be coming from my right here. Uh, no clue how deep this is. So I put on a one ounce bucktail, and uh, you'll see this when I make casts. I'm going to be letting this thing just sink, 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 you know, just maintain contact with the line and, uh, and, and wait to see it hit bottom. But it wasn't long. In fact, you see that shadow from the rod the dock lights are still on. I mean, this is really early in the morning, and uh, I don't think it's been sunrise yet, even though it's an overcast day. Uh, and yeah, there you go, lights are still on, and um, already I've got a fluke. So, all right, this is, uh, this is looking okay. Here, I'm just keeping my rod low because of these birds flying by, but now I'm just holding it, holding it, just watching the line and waiting to see it hit bottom. That's pretty deep. I don't know, it could be 20 feet of water there. Uh, and then I'll start a retrieve. And in a second, I'm going to show you exactly what that retrieve looks like. Um, and again, I was guessing with the one ounce bucktail, uh, I would imagine different tide phases and directions here. Certainly you would need more weight. Um, but yeah, one ounce seems about right. Uh, it's like I said, a very gentle current. Once the current picks up, it will start swinging more right to left. Uh, but I'm just going to try and keep it near bottom. Now, when you fish off a dock, the, the one challenge about keeping it on the bottom is you know, you're up at that higher angle. So when you get closer, you may need to pause your retrieve to let that thing sink back down to the bottom. Uh, and you, you definitely want to be near the bottom when you get near the dock because you know that structure and, yeah, the fish cleaning table. Well, people throw stuff in the water. That attracts bait. That attracts flukes. So... Uh, definitely that's a, a good place to start if you've got access to a dock. Oh, you see a fish break over there. I thought that was probably a bass. I think I figured it out uh, not too long after this. You'll get to see that. And when I look down, you could see that flashing next to the dock. Uh, that's There's quite a bit of bait there, and um, there's some sand eels. So, yeah, I, I've got uh, a gulp sand eel on the top. A lot of times in these environments, I'll use the gulp shrimp, but when I see lots of bait like that, well, I, I kind of want to imitate those bait fish. So I've got the uh, sand eel on the teaser hook, and I have a gulp nemesis on the bucktail. And again, you'll notice th that I let it sink quite a long time after it hit. Now, yeah, it would take less time if I used a heavier jig, but I really want to use as light a weight jig as I can uh, and still be able to stay near the bottom. So right now with the gentle current, the one ounce is absolutely fine. Um, on a couple of these retrieves, you'll see as I get closer, I'm going to pause the retrieve again and let it settle again because, again, with that um, angle on the dock, I want to make sure that I don't inadvertently rise that whole rig up off the bottom because if you come up five, six feet off the bottom, you know, you're not going to catch these fish. And I'm not looking to, like, be on the bottom because then I'm going to drag up, like, weeds and other stuff like that. I'm trying to be... Boy, ideally a foot or two off the bottom would be absolutely perfect. I've got a 19-inch limit, and this one's going to be close. I'm not keeping anything. I, I don't have ice with me. I wasn't prepared to do this. 
uh, you'll see when I, you know, he's way down there, when I get him up, put him on the dock, uh, yeah, this is not a bad one. It's, it's going to be close to keeper size, but hey, like I said, th you know what, uh, I can either do this or I can sit in the truck and wait, so uh, this is okay. So here's that look at the retrieve speed. Yeah, it's really slow, uh, very slow cranking. And I'm just looking to put lots of motion on the jig, keep it within one or two feet of the bottom, and that's all there is to it. Uh, yeah, so I would like to work that rig close to the dock. I've had a couple hits in close, and uh, but yeah, there's you know there's the problem with getting too close, especially when you don't know what's down there. So I've hung up on something and. Yeah, dock situation like this uh, busy place. I'm not expecting that this is going to be a very uh, forgiving hang. So, yep, now I'm going to donate a rig to the bottom here. So, boat docks are typically good places to, for this kind of fishing because, well, this is pretty much a shallow bay overall, but any place that, you know, any marina, boat dock, anything like that, uh, there needs to be channels so that the boats can get in and out, and that's the situation here. Uh, so, especially around low tide, those fish are going to be in the channels. They're not going to be uh, up in one foot of water, most likely. So, yeah, so this uh, this ends up working out. You know, the, the hard part is you know, having access to something, but yeah, this was working out for me this particular morning. So the current's starting to pick up. Uh, maybe you've noticed that I'm no longer always just like facing out. I, my cast starts out kind of to my right, but then I start slowly shifting over to the left, and uh, that's because the current's starting to move. So, yeah, it's setting up pretty nice. You know, even the one ounce is still staying down deep enough, so it's a pretty good situation. Okay, despite losing that rig, you can see I'm making an effort to really swing that rig in close to the dock. Now, when I lost the rig, I didn't have that much current, so I'm um, hoping this is getting me around whatever obstruction that was. Well, this isn't what I want, but hey, it's the first one, so uh, the fluke are outnumbering the sea robins by quite a bit, so it's not too bad. These don't seem to be as numerous as they have been in the previous two years. Uh, interestingly enough, th there's more fluke than there has been in the last two years in the bays that I'm fishing, including this bay. Um, more fluke and less sea robins, so that's good. Uh, you know what, though? There's other places, Long Island Sound, for example, where the fluking has been uh, terrible compared to previous years. Actually, worst year uh, in a long time. But uh, it's nice to see these bays are definitely better than the previous two seasons. All right, yeah, these, these gulp sand eels are really awesome. They catch well. They're kind of soft. So that's what happens. You get a fish, and the thing gets, you know... You can usually stick it back on there. This particular time, I'm not even going to try to do that. It's uh, it's just gotten so soft. So you see, I've got a little container there. It's got the gulp juice in it, and there's a mix of baits in there. But that is uh, where I've got the gulp nemesis. That was the container that the nemesis came in, and then these sand eels are sold in those packages. And, uh, yep, time to get a fresh one on.
All right, now you're going to see one of those times where I stopped the retrieve right there and just let it settle. And yeah, I had been coming up off the bottom. It took a little bit to get down. Look at that. As soon as it got down there, boom, fish. Well, it felt better than it was because there was the fluke on the top and there was a crab on the bottom, so there was a little bit extra weight. So it felt good because I had the weight and I felt the head shakes, but uh, yep, not, not a big one. All right, for a few fish at least, you can usually take these sand eels off, put them back on again. When they start getting really chewed up, what you can do is cut off, you know, the first half an inch or so after it gets really chewed and you know, still get a little more time out of it. So you know what, you're going to get probably at least three fish out of each one. So it, it's not too bad. Uh, sometimes you get a little bit more than that. If you look to the right now, you can see that rip line starting to set up. So that current is definitely starting to push harder. Uh, the harder it pushes, the more, uh, f the farther to the right I'll be casting to lead that current. All right, the first larger one was right around keeper size. This one is definitely over. So, yeah, that's a, a nice catch. Uh, my battery's going to run out as I'm handling uh, this fish here. So that's uh, all you're going to get to see of him before I throw him back.
So you saw that one sea robin I caught and I edited out two others. Uh, it, every single video that I post with a sea robin, somebody comments how great they are to eat. Um, have you ever tried them? They, they always ask. Yeah, I've tried them. I, I have found them kind of bland and boring and the texture of the meat not so great. I don't know. Maybe I'll try them again, cook them a different way or something. But, uh, yeah, I wish somebody found a great market for them because there's uh, generally there is no shortage of them. Uh, but, yeah, there really isn't much for a market, so there's lots of them. So this is almost certainly the kind of fish that jumped earlier in the video. Uh, it's a shad, and just about every trip I've made in the bay for fluke this summer, I've had at least one shad. So there seems to be a fair number of them around. Yeah, I decided to leave this in the video for the benefit of the people that um, don't fish in this particular region and maybe have never seen one of these. Uh, yeah, this is a rather very large spider crab, and I'm not sure what their range is. I don't think they have them down south, but this is about as big as they get. Uh, they um, kind of look like king crabs on a very smaller version, but for a spider crab, this is a large one. They really have very large claws. And uh, yeah, I, actually, there's two of them there. All right, 7.27 a.m. Uh, at this point of the trip, I know that there's not going to be a boat trip, and I have already decided I'm going to quit at 7.30 and just go to work. So, uh, yep, this is my last cast. And, uh, oh, well, at least I'll get into the office. I won't lose a vacation day. And somehow I managed to get a, a pretty okay trip out of this. So I was pretty happy that... I uh, decided to do some casting off the dock, and it worked out really well. So, yeah, you know what? There's opportunities like this all over. Really, it's, it's probably more of a, an issue of access, but if you do have some uh, good legal dock access like this, uh, 
certainly give fluking a try and yeah, just keep in mind, you know, try to make sure you stay near the bottom. That may mean, you know, halfway in that you want to stop your retrieve and just let it settle some more to make sure you're in the strike zone. So, all right, I would encourage, uh, if you haven't checked that already, please check out my online fluke fishing course at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. And if you like these videos, please subscribe. And thanks for watching.